I won't lie to you guys, this portfolio unveil video is definitely probably the biggest one of the year. Lots and lots of changes in both the retirement accounts and the main portfolio. So it's it's absolutely huge, this portfolio unveil, guys. Of course, if you're an Inner Circle member, you already know all the moves I've already done. Um, but for you know regular subscribers, uh, get ready because it's going to be a massive, massive update. Um, of, of course, you if you've watched yesterday's video, uh, which explained uh, why I sold EIT, that's a big part of the main portfolio changes. Uh, you, you kind of already have an update and I did that video. Uh, so today's portfolio unveil is not really a shock, but get ready because it's a big portfolio unveil, lots of changes. So Welcome back to the channel, guys. In case you're new here, my name is Adrian. This channel is all about income-oriented investing, and this is episode 31 in my monthly series where I unveil my entire portfolio from A to Z. And when I mean A to Z, I really mean A to Z. So let's get to it. I will show you not only my account balance, uh, all the accounts put together, but then we'll go through the two uh, main accounts or two entities that I call them, the retirement accounts and the main portfolio, which pretty much I live off of. So we'll go through all the changes and uh, th that I've done covering the month of November. So all these changes, I'll actually give you the updated figures or the updated amounts as of today, December 7th, but all the changes until the end of uh, November. So let's get to it. And don't forget that what I'm about to show you in Excel, uh, first, I'll show you my, my account balance and passive. But after that, we'll break it down using Excel. And if it's too small for you, you could download uh, for free uh, my entire portfolio my, in Excel. So you could follow along on my website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca. Go to free tools and it will be the very first download. So without wasting more time, let's get into the portfolio and veil because it is a big one. All right, everyone, time to unveil everything. And before we get started, I'd like to thank the official sponsor of this portfolio unveiled video. It's Passive. So Passive is exactly what you're looking at right now. This is the portfolio organizational or rebalancing tool that I personally use. I love this tool. It organizes all my portfolios in one place. You could actually see that here and I'll go through it in a second here. And don't forget everyone that Passive does have a free version zero dollars a month try it out if you haven't tried it it's really really good and if you're with quest trade like myself you actually get the elite membership which will unlock several uh, more advanced features completely free you see that here zero dollars for quest trade clients so the elite membership is normally 99 dollars a year you get extra benefits but if you want to try the elite membership you don't have quest trade you could always give it a shot i do have a 50 percent off coupon code in the video description below. So if anything, it's only $50 or approximately $50. If you don't like it, you could always go back to the free version. What do you have to lose? Trust me, try it out. It's really, really good. And if anything, guys, just try the, the free version. I really, really like it. So again, thank you to Passive for sponsoring the video and being a good friend of the channel as well. So this is my total uh, value of all my six investing accounts put together in Canadian dollars, very important Canadian dollars. So in case you're new here and you didn't know, I do have two separate entities, which I've separated nicely and passive. It gives me the ability to do so, which I absolutely love this feature. So I do have my retirement accounts. You see 40, approximately 40%. That's just because the value of my retirement accounts, which are three accounts, my RSP, my wife's RSP, my small Lira, total them up and they make up above 50, uh, 40% of my total value or this total value. That's why I have 40% there. Uh, and my main portfolio, which makes up our two TFSA accounts and our joint cash account or non-registered account, aka margin account for uh, in Quest Trade, that's what they call it. The main portfolio is 60%. So it's about 60% of my value, my uh, assets are in the main portfolio and 40% in the retirement accounts. Combine it all together and you have a grand total of a little... Uh, just under 1.3 million, I guess I'm getting, you know, I, I'm, this is my record. I, I'm at the highest I've ever been and I do expect it to keep going up and up. And it, this is live. I'm filming this at 1.52 p.m. on December 7. The stock market is still open. So you just see the value change there just to prove to you that what I'm showing you is real. So this is the uh, the value. So it is going up. It's doing really, really well. Uh, the, I've never been happier with this style of investing. Now let's go through all the changes and we'll start with the retirement accounts guys there's big big massive changes in both the main portfolio which you already know about if you watched yesterday's video but also in the retirement accounts lots and lots of streamlining and also a strategy update for my personal rsp so let's get to it and again 
You could download this Excel sheet for free on my website in case it's too small, but you'll see a lot less holdings. You'll see a brand new outline as well, much nicer and you know everything is very clear now or hopefully everything is clear and it fits on the screen. So let's go through the changes I've done. Pretty much all the big changes have been in my uh, portfolio, my RSP portfolio, which is at the top here. And in case you're, you're newer to the channel, you have questions. I always have the same questions on how do you track? What's your strategy? What about taxes? How are you organizing everything? I do plan on, on in the next month or two doing an updated video portfolio Understanding my portfolio unveil videos top FAQs or my portfolio explain. So I'm going to go through all the top FAQs I get so you understand fully these monthly portfolio unveiled videos. So stay tuned for that video because I can't go in it here. It'll just be a three hour video and I just rather cover mostly the changes and the updates to my portfolio in these videos. So if we go to the RSP tracker tab where I have all the changes, I've made a lot of changes in November, guys. I even included one that I made on December 1st, which is also a big change. So as you noticed, and I, I even saved my, um, this my sorry, last month's unveil. This is what my RSP looked like in the last unveil. So I had OARC, Clip, Tesla, Connie, BTCY.U. I don't have any of those anymore. I still have QQQY much bigger position as you will see i still have of course s fall i did trim it down just a tiny 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 bit to put more in qqqy and and i did swap out my btcy.u for maxi uh, another bitcoin etf uh by simplify which i believe is more correlated and more efficient and i like i do like it better than btcy.u and i'll explain in a little bit so why all these changes what did i what did i actually do Let, let's just figure that out so I did sell off TSLY, Connie, which are the Yieldmax, Coinbase, and Tesla ETFs. I sold off Clip, and I swapped it, swapped that mostly in QQQY, which is the Defiant NASDAQ 100 ETF, um, a little bit in OARC, but in December 1st or a few days ago, I actually sold off the OARC to put it all in QQQY, uh, 25,000 worth. As you see here, there was 29K in OARC, I put 25K in QQQY, and the rest, which I'm happy about because I, I, I got a lot of gain on it because Bitcoin's been going up. There was just a little leftover from the 29K, put the 4K in maxi. So why did I sell TSLY, Coinbase, Yieldmax ETFs? Well, those were pretty easy. I figure my reasoning behind it is those are <clears throat> two big stocks in Kathy Wood's ARK ETF, which is OARC. So I decided to do that. Also, Tesla, very easy. It's a top stock in the NASDAQ. So uh that's the reason for that one and then you might be asking okay well why did you sell off the old arc well i just it's not because i don't like the old arc but i feel like the nasdaq 100 is more the classic innovation growth i like i like indexes better than stock picking strategies uh, as well and i just love uh qqq wise um and JPY, by the way, unique cover call strategy. I have videos coming up on that as well. We'll go deeper into it. But I, I'm really, really a fan of these unique, very, very unique cover call strategy, which does daily options, whereas OARC and all the yield max ones do the, the weekly options. Because daily options are only available on the indexes, on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000 so far. I really like that strategy. Clip, why did I get rid of Clip? Well, honestly, I don't really believe in the Chinese economy, to be honest, and Clip is Chinese technology companies. And to be honest with you, I just rather have the NASDAQ. I rather have the NASDAQ 100. I just feel better about it. So that's why I, why I did that. And also to make my portfolio which much, much smaller because I decided, just like my wife's RSP, which I really like uh, the strategy, which is fully on drip. I wanted to do the same thing on my RSP. I want to make everything, especially in the retirement accounts, as hands off as possible. My account, I've been manually reinvesting the distributions every month and figuring out where to put them every month. And I just don't feel like doing that anymore. So I decided I'm going to do, have all three retirement accounts, my RSP, my wife's RSP and the Lira all on drip. So now finally everything is on drip now, guys. And very simple, QQQY is going to be the main core position in my RSP, JPY, the main core equity position, my wife's RSP. We're both going to have SVOL as secondary alternative income positions. Um, 
just came out. Well, I, the video is not out yet while I'm filming this video, but very, very critical video to watch if you own SVOL, even Maxi, by the way, if you're interested in those ETFs, check out the Q&A that I just did with Simplify ETFs. I feel like SVOL is just going to be even better now. It's even safer now. Make sure to check out that very key critical Q&A video. Trust me, I know it's long, but it's well, well worth it. If you own SVOL, you got or interested in investing in it, still not really sure how it works, you got to watch that video. So I absolutely love SVOL. So SVOL, key secondary position in both both our accounts. My account, I, I did I did leave the Bitcoin, which ended up being a really good decision, but I did swap out BTCY.U for Maxi, which is my Bitcoin ETF in my Lira account. By the way, it's gone up so much that now I am only down about $1,000 on it uh, when I was down so much on it. So, uh, you know, the Lira, and you have the objectives for each account here. I decided to just go all in on Bitcoin, I think I had btcy.u, uh, then I switched it to Maxi, and I absolutely love Maxi. And we talk about Maxi as well in the Q&A video with Simplify. Make sure to check it out. But I'm pretty much almost broken even uh, right now on that. And I'll show you in directly in passive. You could see here that uh, the value translated to Canadian dollars is 32500 So I'm literally $500 away. I could even update it to 500 I guess. Sorry, you guys have to take my face away. Having some technical difficulties, it freezes up. So anyway, let me uh, continue where I left off here. So yeah, Maxi, uh, oh, oh, yeah, so Lira, almost broken even, right? Who knows what Bitcoin is gonna do in the next five, 10 years. If, if Kathy Woods and Michael Saylor's predictions are right, not that I really listen to them or believe any predictions, but who knows? And I really love Maxi's strategy where you're not capping your your, your Bitcoin upside on like BTCY.U. That's uh, really why I did it. And of course, this is, you know, retirement accounts. There's no 15% withholding tax. So of course, I'm, I'd rather get the, the better strategy. And uh, if you don't believe me, the best thing you could do and understand what I'm talking about is in your stock tracking app, whether it's your phone or whatever, just put BTCY or BTCY.U and then Maxi next to each other. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And again, make sure to check out that, sim that Simplify Q&A because we do talk about Maxi because uh, uh, there, there's some exciting news or there's some exciting stuff that could happen with, with Maxi. Basically, they could, you know, if the net asset value of the fund keeps going up, the cash is going to be going up in the fund. That means they could easily raise their distribution and, and Shailesh, the portfolio manager at Simplify, actually confirms this. So very, very exciting stuff. So I, my, uh, Bitcoin could go to the moon and I'd rather have Maxi because I'm not limiting my upside. So... I really like this new structure. This is completely hands off now, everyone. Everything is on drip. So all I really have to do is update my share, my share counts. And that is pretty much it. And of course, the values. And uh, remember that it's all translated to Canadian. So the exchange rate to Canadian dollar gets stronger. Uh, you know, the values could go down and if the Canadian dollar gets weaker the values and my income could go up because don't forget the income that I show on my thumbnail and in the title, that's all translated to Canadian dollars. And every one cent, I actually calculated this, it's a big deal. Every cent that the Canadian dollar goes down, it's a little over $4,000 of a difference. So if this goes to 137, 138, every cent that the Canadian dollar gets weaker, uh, I, I bring in over $4,000 more of income every month. That's how powerful it is because all, all of these accounts are in US deep. So um, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about what you see here, the tracking. So, you know, overall, really what matters is this here. So to track my performance is when you're dripping an account, guys, and not taking anything out of it, it's very easy. How much did you actually put in? So this is my total contributions for each account, which I'm never going to be contrib contributing anymore because as a non-resident, not only is an, has no value contributing, but you can't contribute to your RSP anyway. Uh, you, you can if you have more room, but there's really, really no point to it. So this 145, 165, 33,000, that's going to should stay like that forever. But the value should be gradually going up over time with the drips. And that's when the returns uh, are going to are gonna move every single month. So I know many of you are curious and worried about QQQY, JPY, that the NAV seems to be going down. It's basically the same strategy like the yield max ETFs, except it's daily options, which I absolutely love. I think it's very innovative. And it's on the indexes, NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So what I've done here is I've actually put you could say the initial investment or how much I actually put in to each one. So QQQY, for example, I actually invested 
120,000. But if we look at my RSP account, the value, and that's 120,000 US, the value is 123,411. So looking at the open profits and loss, that includes the drip and it could be very misleading. You'll see big losses here, but really all that matters is the value, right? The value of your account, the value of your investment. So technically if I invested 120 and it's worth 123.4, I'm up $3,400. With Jeppy, I invested 100,000. Now it's the value of the investment with the drips, of course, is 104.7, so I'm up 4,796. So you guys, you, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So with QQQ and JEPY, it, it, it's a units game. If you're dripping it, it's probably gonna be the best strategy. If you're living off the income, you're gonna expect, if you're just taking out all the income and spending it, well, you gotta expect lower distributions and lower NAV over time because they're giving out such big income, you have to remember that the income is part of the return, guys. So very, very important. So I know many of you are curious, so what I'll do going forward in the next unveils, because I'll have more time in the RSP unveil, because now that I'm dripping everything, there's less to talk about, I will show you every time how QQQY and JPY is doing, or the value, compared to my initial investment, right? And I, I put the same thing for the SVOL and the, the other investments as well. RA is the one I'm, I'm pretty much down most on. But here's another example, Maxi. I pretty much put in $14,000 into the, the fund. And if you look at the value, it's the value is 19,310. That's with the increase of price and the drips going through. So you get the deal, right? All that really matters is the value, guys. So it's really this here that, that matters and what I'm tracking because I'm dripping everything. So if you're dripping everything, all that really matters is what you put in, what is the current value. So if you have any questions, let me know. Again, another video is going to come out in a month or two explaining my portfolio and the top FAQs I get in detail. Now we got to cover the main portfolio as well. So let's get to it. All right, everyone, the main portfolio. So probably not a shocker to you, right? If you watched uh, the uh, yesterday's video, but the main news, of course, is sorry about that. It's here is that I sold EIT. So I had a forty thousand dollar book, you know, initial investment in EIT. I actually realized a six thousand two hundred and twenty five dollar capital gain. That doesn't include the income, by the way. Capital gain is just from the stock price, right? So not only did I make 62.25, but all that EIT beautiful income that I made, thousands and thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars, that's that's all extra. So uh, what, and again, if you wanna understand the reasons why, check out that video. I'm not gonna go through it in detail. I also explain why I bought the things I did with that $46,200 proceeds, right? Cause I, you know, when you I sold it, I obviously had $46,000 to invest. So I put 30,000 in USCO, 5,000 each in BKCL, ENCL, and GDV, and the rest, a little leftover of 1,000 or 1,200, whatever it was, in YTSL just for fun. Another thing I did that's uh, definitely not, not a surprise, and I know many of you have already done this, I did decide to sell my ENS into ENCL. It's just a very easy to understand swap, right? And now we finally have a, a really go good alternative for ENS. ENCL is one of the highest yielding Covered call leverage ETFs from Horizons. It has a top 10 oil and gas companies. That's why I really like ENCL. It has 40% in the pipelines and 60% in the oil and gas producers. So that it, having a nice chunk in those pipelines reduces the risk. And it's all the big, big companies. We're talking Suncor, Canadian Natural, Synovus, Tourmaline, Arc, Imperial. And then you got the four pipelines, right? Enbridge, uh, TRP, Pembina, and the other one. So, um, I did make a very small loss, at, you know, on twenty thousand, a one thousand dollar loss on ENS, but I think approximately made twelve to fifteen thousand dollars of income off ENS in in the past. So definitely a, a big net positive, right? You can't just look at this capital loss and say, "Well, you lost a thousand dollars." What was the point? That doesn't include the income, guys, right? So um, very very simple swap again to streamline my portfolio even more. So. Total of what I bought, about 31K in USCL, 5K in BKCL, 25K in ENCL. That, that's because of the ENS swap plus the five grand from the EIT. Another 5K in HDIF, averaging that down. 5K in GDV, that's from the EIT cell and a, a little 2K in YTSL. So that is, uh, sorry, I keep going to that one. That's the moves I made. I've also redone my 
my sheet aesthetically. So it should be a lot bigger, a lot clearer now. Let me know what you guys think. I really think it's awesome. You could see everything. So uh, let's go through the holdings real quick and then we'll go through all the totals because I've added a lot more information. When I, when I say A to Z, I really mean A to Z. I really wanna show you guys everything. I'm not trying to hide every, anything here. So H yield, uh, big changes with H yield, right? They added S max, they added the Q max, they, they finally got rid of Q YLD and X YLD. I'm pretty sure they're gonna get rid of R YLD and they're probably gonna make some big changes. Uh, they just released uh, prospectus. They're coming out with four ETFs, a uh, healthcare one, uh, energy one, materials one, and US banks one. So it's pretty clear what's gonna happen, right? My estimate is that they're gonna kick out all the third party ones and just have HYLD and HDIV hold their own ETFs, which is probably greatly gonna not only reduce fees, but enhance yield. And get ready, I do have a Q&A schedule with Hamilton to talk all about this. And it makes complete sense, right? You see that GLCC is the gold one, they're gonna come out with their own gold one. NXF is the energy one they have, they're gonna come out with their own energy, HHL, their own healthcare. And HTA, that's tech, they already have QMAX, they're also coming out with a US Banks one as well. So very, very exciting stuff. I'm very excited about HDIV and HYLD. I strongly suspect that, especially for HYLD, we're gonna have some distribution increases. HDIV is a big, big position in my portfolio. Absolutely love it. Been getting some, it's one of my lowest yields and I've been getting a lot of questions about it. You know, why isn't it performing that well? It's pretty simple why. Look inside the portfolio. One of the ETFs is the travel ETF. A big chunk is the US banks ETF. So it's only normal that you know, the, the, these, these sectors have gone down tremendously. You also have utilities. Utilities have gone down as well. HHL barely doesn't move. They did add HPYT, a little position, which I really, really like, a little bit more diversification. But guys, you got to think of it long term here. I, HDIF will always be a big position in my portfolio. I love Harvest's consistency with their strategy. And look at it this way. If the U.S. banks and travel industry, if, if when rates start getting cut, you know, HDIF is going to go up substantially thanks to that leverage as well. Um, USCL, uh, one of my favorites as well, pretty much the S&P 500 with covered calls and 25% leverage. I see myself keep, keep, you know, to keep going with this one and get to 100, 110, 20. I think most probably these three are going to be my top three positions, which mostly give you uh, your U.S. exposure. Uh, which I'm starting to like more than Can Canadian exposure, to be honest. HDIV, GDV, also uh, key positions here uh, at 60K a piece, about 7%. So I did been adding a little bit more to GDV. I think the premium is a lot smaller than usual. Dividend stocks get crushed or get hurt when interest rates go up. But I think maybe we'll see the rates start going down. Dividend stocks are going to benefit, which is going to help uh, GDB. DGS, unfortunately, still not paying. Very, very close, but still not paying. Really, really annoying. I guess you can, you know, to give you an accurate description of my income for this month, I'm, you could put it to zero. Um, but, it, you know, been missing a lot of dividends. But we're getting close. We're getting close, guys. Hang in there, I, you know, it is trading at a discount. Now is a great time to buy it, a crappy time to sell it. If you haven't seen my Q&A with Brompton recently, we talk a lot about DGS. DGS apparently is trading at a premium 80% of the time. And this, this guy's been around for longer than 10 years. So only 20% of the time GD, DGS trades at a discount and it is currently trading at a discount right now. So a great time to pick it up. Really captures the overall Canadian market. A lot of Canadian dividend stocks in there. RS also uh, picked some up recently, last couple of months. I think uh, even this one, this one shocked me when I looked at the premium. I think it's only at a 3% or 4% premium, which is incredible. I'm thinking of adding another 5,000 to RS, to be honest. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer. ENCL, BKCL, Bank, I consider these, and even RS, I guess, these are kind of now my core Canadian positions if you will, right, ENCL is Canadian energy, very, very high yield. It's been going, uh, oil prices have been going down, so ENCL might be a great pickup right now, but I love the fact that it's, you know, it's not just uh, the oil and gas producers like you see here, but it's also the pipelines, which are a little bit more steady. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you guys, I kind of reorganized, reorganized the comments here. You have, um, you know, all the ETFs inside these all-in-one ETF uh, where you see it outlined. Uh, and even these ones I added, the actual stocks, right? Uh, in, 
the ones where we could expect that the stocks will not change. I actually uh, took the work and time to add them here. Call, I'm actually in the green on call. I knew it was a great time to pick up call. I mean, it's not really rocket science, guys. Uh, you know, top US banks, uh, ph phenomenal yield, no distribution cut whatsoever. I'm very happy with this one. Uh, I wouldn't consider it a core position, however. FTN, I recently added 5K. Look at this tremendous yield I'm making. Yes, my book price is 1036, which is, you know, I'm down about a little over 30% because FTN is trading at about $7 right now. But I'm okay with this one, holding this one. Uh, maybe I'll get rid of it in the future when it goes back to 1036. But hey, I'm never going to complain about 1456 yield, $490 a month. I'm not going to complain about that. I'm just going to hold on to it and time is going to be my friend. HPYT has been kicking ass. I mean... It's giving a, I'm never going to complain about a 15% yield. It's over $12 now. I don't expect this one to rise too much uh, until rates start getting cut. Then it's going to go up. But remember, they, they do a lot of covered calls. So you can't expect a big jump up. But the point is not to jump up. The point is to really get you that really nice, consistent yield. And yes, by the way, HPYT was added to HDIF recently, a small 3.4% position in there. YTSL, so now we're getting into some good news. They recently raised the distribution again from 35 cents to 40 cents. Look at the yield that I have on this one. It's it's almost comical. I laugh when I see a 30.44% yield because my book price is 15.77. I only have a very small position and it's 7,000. Uh, I see myself maybe adding more to YTSL for fun when I kind of have leftover cash. That's you know, I, I, I think maybe I'll probably stop at 10,000, but maybe I'll, I'll keep going. Why not? I really like Tesla, the, 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 the potential it could have. But of course, it, it is higher risk because it was only one company. Fantastic news. Big news is really the crypto. BTCY, ETHY both had distribution increases. Um, I'm like a dollar away from breaking even on BTCY. BTCY. Boy, have the, the tides have turned. And I'm super happy that I've stuck it out. I know in case you have stuck it out, it's been a while, but guys, patient we're always rewards the patient income investors. That is the way to go. So almost 10% yield. Ether still down significantly on it, but hey, I'm just gonna keep these. And the yield went up on, on all three on these three here. So my overall yield now is a really nice 12.26%. If DG, if I put this to zero, which is the real yield, it's about 11.70. Gotta be honest with you, but I do expect DGS to start paying very, very soon. All we need, I think, is one more rally in Canada, financials and energy. Uh, so of course, financials have been going up now, energy is going down, so which is kind of, you know, DGS has, does have a lot of energy, but there's one more rally with energy and financials, I think DGS is gonna pay. Uh, can't wait for that. So let me go through the outline real quick, by the way. Uh, only down overall 12.37%. So this is very, very uh, great because I, it used to be much higher. This is not something I really care about, but I'm just showing my overall portfolio value versus the investment of how much I actually put in. So now my annual income gross is over 106,000. My monthly income gross is 8861. What does gross mean? Well, if you watch my latest Panama update video, I've explained that in the margin account, I do pay 25% withholding tax. So what I've done is, uh, I could un unhide the, the columns here. It's, it's pretty boring, but basically what I've done is I've actually, I'm, I'm tracking how many of, this is my total shares, okay? Remember this account, main portfolio is the two TFSAs and cash account put together. So now I added columns to track, okay, how many shares do I have in the TFSA? and in the margin, and that's gonna help me calculate exactly my monthly 25% withholding tax. So that is what this number is here. So this is how much I'm pretty much paying in withholding taxes every month. So this is my net monthly income after that 25% withholding tax. And by the way, it only applies to the margin account, the cash account, not the two TFSAs. So uh, this is just to be completely honest, open and honest with you, but Really, you know, it, let's say I was in Canada, it, I wouldn't pay this 25% withholding tax. So that's why I'm really going to go with this number to make it more accurate. It's not because I'm hiding anything. If I did, you know, I'm showing the number. It net is really 72.42 for me. The gross is 88.61. And that's, of course, if DGS is paying, if we 
get rid of that, my net is uh, just under 7,000 a month here. And the, the gross is 8453. So that's it. So I just, you know, adding more information here so you have an accurate A to Z uh, view of my portfolio, my main portfolio, and, and what it's doing. And of course, these are the totals which I calculate all the income received. And this is going to be gross as well. Capital gains realized, that's if I sell something and I make capital gains. And then the total profit, remember these are realized right away, is going to be just the addition of these two numbers. And then this is just going to be my current portfolio value, which is this number, 760, plus my profit. And that will give me my unrealized return. So this is basically telling you if I sold everything today, I would make a total return of 34%, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. So... There is, I'm completely out of breath. So there's the unveil for both the RSP, the retirement accounts, the main portfolio. If you have any questions, let me know, but stay tuned for that FAQ video where I'm gonna go more in detail about strategy, taxes, tracking, structure, objectives, mission, everything like that. And we're gonna do this again next month. So uh, see you next time. And oh yeah, before I go, by the way, in case you want, you're interested in becoming a member, uh, now's a great time to do it. Uh, if you like these portfolio un unveil videos, one of my very popular, probably the most popular exclusive videos for members only is my dad's RIF account. So my dad's retirement account, I unveiled it from A to Z to my to the members. And a lot of you are getting a lot of messages and comments and it's very, very helpful. You absolutely loved uh, this video where I show what my dad's RIF is and how he's making his income the entire portfolio and I've been getting a lot of comments and questions. Hey, can you do an update on it? So I, I'm just going to announce that January's exclusive video will be an update to my dad's retirement accounts, including not only the RIF, but also the LIF account, the Lira as well. So stay tuned. I know you guys are going to love that January exclusive video. I've been getting a lot of you know praise for that one. I know many of you are retired. It's giving you some ideas and giving you motivation and helping you get over the fear by looking at my dad's who's 71. Uh, retirement account. So if you're interested in seeing that video next month, because this month we're doing an, a, a live stream uh, on the 16th, I believe, join now. So all you do, I've got to do is click that little join button. I would really appreciate your support. Get You get a lot of benefits and perks. So that's it, everyone. See you next time. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and U.S. stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades and Passive, I have half off for the elite membership. If you're interested in the elite membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free 
if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama. And there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.